changer makes this place. There was a day the people told their children when you could fish that slough by hand. When the salmon berries bent so low over the water, the dog salmon would leap for the buds thinking they were dragonflies. When the spring air tasted like loam, just waking, just throwing back the dirt covers of its bed, the maidenhair ferns and horsetails shaking themselves free of winter and the cottonwoods seeding the air like late warm snow. The Snoqualmie say that Moon made all these things. Moon the transformer, Moon the changer. Moon changed an angry man into fire and a fish trap into a waterfall. He made the salmon to go out to hunt in the spring and come home fat and fertile in the fall. Moon the changer and his brother's son watched from the sky world through trees so tall they could brush them with their hands. And the people, satisfied, stayed for a long time. Snoqualmie, Salish, Moon, and Sun, all in this bowl of earth between the mountains. So this is the first creation story of this area. And hopefully later, as I add to it, get to add further creation stories. So, how did Redmond, or how did poetry become an important part of Redmond's culture? I want to give you just a teensy bit of background and then I'm going to introduce our poets. What I know is that 15 years ago, I began reading my own work at an open mic at Victor's Coffee Company that was put on by a group called RASP, Redmond Association of Spoken Word. You don't know how many times we've had to explain what RASP means. <laughs> I liked it. The people were warm and welcoming and creative, and being among them made me a better writer and a braver reader I went public. When I got a call from one of the founders, I was excited that they might want me to be a featured reader at one of their events. Instead, I was asked if I wanted to join and help run them. I did, and I've been with them in one form or another through a long series of evolutionary steps. We've conducted literary festivals for adults and children. One of, our, one of the things that we, I think, are most delighted and most uh, kind of embarrassed about is that our first literary festival was called Word Explosion, <laughs> in which we quickly changed to write out loud because none of us could say Word Explosion without laughing. Um, we taught classes for teens, uh, for seniors, and taught in the schools. And uh, most recently, had a, um, they, they were part of, of the uh, couple of years that I, as Poet Laureate, had a uh, booth at Derby Days te teaching and writing poetry with kids. If you've ever taught a kid to write on a typewriter, it's the most amazing thing in the world. They'll write anything if you put it on a typewriter because the typewriter is so fascinating. So the six people that I'm about to introduce are in many ways the result of, of the dedication that Rasp uh, gave in me to the Redmond literary scene. I met some of them through my work there, and, and others through other poetry venues, and I've, and I've really just met a couple of you tonight. Uh, they've read their work locally, regionally, and nationally, supported by the shared conviction that this work matters. So please help me to welcome the poets for the uh, Centennial Poetry Project. <laughs> 